We're here at Erina Ada Care with Ali today looking at a range of different lifters, give a little bit of education and a short little video. So what have we got here with us today? So here we've got two um, full lifters. We've got one uh, which is the A205. It's an aluminium lifter with a safe working load of 205 kilos. And we've got the spreader bar attached to it there. This one here is a A150F, so a safe working load of 150 kilos, and we've got a pivot frame on this one currently. So this one can hold more weight, this one holds 55 kilos less, so quite a lot um, less, and two different types of attachments for the sling that supports people as um, we lift people up. So for those watching this video that don't really know what these pe these pieces of equipment are, just mindful that general public watching as well, um, those working within the aged care and disability um, sector supporting people will be aware of these pieces of equipment. So full lifter, sling lifter, hoist, lots of different names. Technology. Supporting people that um, have challenges with mobility, unable to stand, unable to walk, needing to be supported in lifting. Wonderful pieces of equipment to provide safe transfers from bed to chair, um, from bedroom to a showering piece of equipment, toileting piece of equipment, um, without people having to pick people up like they used to back in um, the olden days. So improved manual handling, improved support for people as well, better dignity, so wonderful devices. Different types of slings, however, so this spreader bar with this clip function is more of a looped type sling. You'll see this sort of clip function here, there's a different attachment. The main thing to be aware there is when people are using sling lifters, hoists, that the sling being used is not only the right size for the person being supported but is the correct sling for the lifter so i could not use the sling on vice versa here it would not be safe and it just wouldn't work it just simply wouldn't attach but sometimes there can be slings that could attach particularly the clip mechanism for different models and different manufacturers arguably could attach but may not attach firmly and click in so be very careful of not um, being complacent and using the wrong sling just to avoid a couple of hundred dollars of a new sling um, that's a really important factor why would we use this type of bar versus this attachment so it's very different that attachment yeah why would you use that so i tend to think of um a pivot frame i guess we can change someone's position in the sling by using the pivot. So this one here is a manual pivot frame. We do also have an electric pivot frame version as well, which is integrated into the hand control. Um, when I'm thinking loop slings and a spreader bar like that, if I am planning a transfer in my head, I would be thinking what piece of equipment we're transferring from and what piece of equipment we're transferring to and I would manipulate the different loop straps on my sling to change the person's position that way. So there's a bit more poor planning whereas with this style you can change their position while they're in the sling. Yeah and I note that on this one there's a piece down the bottom as well so this yes. version can actually have that piece on it. Yes, yeah, so as standard, the A150F actually comes with this style of spreader bar on it. Yeah, and then one of the key differences between these pieces of lifter as well, at the back of that device, there's actually a, a foot pedal to spread um, the front legs of the device to get around equipment, where this model um, has that integrated into the handset. So two different um, versions there that you'll see in manufacturers of if that's actually manual or if that's actually in the handset. Um, there can be price differences in terms of the capabilities of lifters that can be a component there of the consideration. Um, as well as there can be manual handling considerations with foot pedal as well. So on good surfaces such as this carpet that's quite thin or lino, um, something that's very smooth, that foot pedal will work well. If this was in the home environment on maybe heavy carpet, that may be harder to manipulate. 
So there are considerations that a, a therapist, occupational therapist, physio would take in of going, what's the suitable piece of equipment for what sort of transfers we're doing? What's the safe weight limit? What are we moving to and from the most? What sort of surface are we moving, moving on? What's the turning components here? So these become, you'll see in other videos that we do, um, some of the pieces of equipment maybe a, a little bit simpler to prescribe. Sometimes these can be more complex because they're often somebody's needing support for their transfers, but also interplay with other pieces of equipment as well. So the, the time taken by the therapist to make the right considerations here sometimes will be a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, any other considerations with these? Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, there's lots of risk assessment involved <laughs> with manual handling equipment. It's another one of those topics that we could spend a much longer period of time to go over. Definitely. But yeah, understanding the client, what their physical abilities are, um, and making sure that we're prescribing the correct piece of equipment with the appropriate sling for the style of transfer. Yeah. That we're Especially to in like a, an environment where multi, uh, multiple people might be living. So residential aged care facility, disability group home, hospital. Um, having some interchangeability with devices, the ability for the lifter to reach the floor very easily, good battery backups, which most devices have, um, but the ability to use lots of different types of sizes of slings. So not in the, this video today, but there's lots of different slings um, and types of slings and not all fit on different types of frames. So that can be a consideration of, is this just for one person or is this for like a whole company facility? So considerations there as well. And one of the main things often after all of that's done right is just making sure there's a process of having batteries charged. Um, all devices come with some sort of safety mechanism. You can see that clearly on this one. Let's say you're midway up in the air and you run out of battery, there is an actual emergency pull button to be able to lower that down under the pressure of the device. So having that training for staff um, assists as well to make sure that there's some sort of emergency procedure. Definitely. There's also an emergency stop button um, as well on the lifters if they need to use that. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I think we've covered quite a lot. You could, you're yeah. right, we could speak a long time about manual handling pieces of equipment. So and maybe in another episode. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for your time today. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.